Hi, everyone. My name is Julie Navickis. Um, I am the project impact manager with Burning Soul Press. Right now, I'm supposed to be live in our Soul Writer um, Facebook group, and I apologize. I tried twice and I could not for the life of me get Zoom to be able to share my screen. So I'm very sorry. I am going to record my session today and I'm just going to post it in the Facebook group for you all to access and hopefully watch when you're able to. Um, sorry, I'm clearly technology inept today. So I will figure that out and I will um, hopefully have a better uh, way to present myself here in the future. But for today's purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and record our Instagram for Authors uh, presentation. I'll just go ahead and get started by introducing myself to you so you know exactly who this crazy uh, technology enough person is. Uh, my name is Julie Navickis and I am the Project Impact Manager with Burning Soul Press. Um, I've been with Burning Soul since about November of last year. Um, I also work at Illinois State University. I teach in the School of Communication. Um, most of the classes I instruct are focused on writing for public relations, um, feature writing, magazine production and design, public speaking. I've had my hand in a lot of things over the years. Um, I also teach at Heartland Community College in their continuing education program. Um, and I also work with the YWCA and I help them with their social media strategy as long as blog content creation. So I do a little bit of everything, um, but one of my most favorite things that I like to get to do is talk about social media and how to plan and prepare accordingly. So our session today is going to be about Instagram for authors. Okay, let's go ahead and open this up and share it. Okay, so Instagram for authors. I think I'll start by just giving a little bit of context that Instagram for authors today is kind of like a crash course in Instagram. Um, it's not going to go over the details of how specifically to use Instagram and kind of the intricacies of that, but this is mostly framed with um, tips, tricks, best advice, um, things that the, could be helpful to you as you start to establish your author platform specifically with Instagram. If any of these areas are of interest to you and you would feel like you'd want to dive deeper, I can certainly do that. Um, and I'm happy to connect with everyone individually and we can talk through what you're looking for. But for today's purposes, we are going to start with kind of an overview of what Instagram looks like and how you can use it effectively from your author standpoint. So we'll cover your bio. We'll talk about how to generate content effectively. We'll talk through consistent branding strategies, think through your audience, engagement tactics, hashtags, and then I'll conclude with some tips and advice of how to use the platform appropriately. Okay, we will get started by talking about your bio first. Um, depending on your comfort level or knowledge of Instagram, your bio is kind of your tiny little place on Instagram where you have the opportunity to succinctly describe who you are and why you have a presence on Instagram. So you have a very small window um, of places that you can share content about yourself um, and give everyone who's looking at your profile kind of a little snapshot of who you are and what you want to do with your Instagram presence. So I'll start with the professional photo. That's first on my list here. Think of your Instagram presence as your baseline for branding yourself. And that begins with a professional photo. That's the first thing that people are going to see when they look at your bio on Instagram. So I would definitely recommend if you haven't already, you certainly want to get uh, professional author photos taken. Um, just from my experience, maybe about $150, $200 will get you a one hour session with a professional photographer. Um, then you just kind of have a bank of professional images that you can use, not just for your profile photo here, but it'll help you as you kind of sprinkle in your content and kind of share your author journey along the way. You're going to want to have some professional photos that you can pull from. If you don't have a professional photo, I would say use something that works well for you as kind of a stopgap. Um, you don't want to use a selfie. You certainly don't want to use a photo that has someone else in it with you. You don't want to confuse your audience of who the actual author is on Instagram. Um, so start with the professional photo. This photo should be consistent with all of your other social media platform presences. Um, so use the same photo at Instagram that you would on your Facebook author page. Um, 
LinkedIn, anything else that you have a presence on, keep it consistent, use the same photo. I also want to draw your attention here to the professional versus the personal account. You definitely want to be using the professional account, not the personal account. Um, you can change your preferences in your settings. So if you log into your Instagram profile, go to your settings, you can find what type of account you currently have. If you're in personal, it's very easy to switch to a professional account. Um, Basically what the difference is, is that the professional account is going to give you the opportunity to kind of label yourself or brand yourself as an author. There's no fee for it. There's no cost. So I would definitely recommend if you are using your Instagram presence to further yourself as an author, you're going to want to change it over to the professional account and then it will give you several options and you can choose what best fits you or what best describes you. I went ahead and just clicked on author because that's what I want everyone else to know about me if they're visiting my content. So Instagram was going to give you about 150 characters to succinctly describe who you are and what your presence is for on Instagram. So we'll look at my silly one here. I have gone with the wording copy addict and contemporary romance novelist with Inkspell Publishing. In a nutshell, that pretty much describes me. I love coffee, I drink a lot of it, but I'm also a contemporary romance novelist and I've signed a couple contracts to publish my upcoming books with Inkspell Publishing. So when I think about people who might be visiting my page, that's information that they're gonna wanna know about me upfront. So keep it very short, keep it very consistent with the brand that you're going to be promoting on Instagram. It's also really smart to include hashtags in your bio. Hashtags are not just searchable on your feed, they're searchable in your bio as well. So be very strategic about what you choose to include in your bio because that is a way that potential readers could be searching for you. So I went with hashtag, I loved you yesterday out August of 2022. That just gives readers the understanding and the knowledge that my book will publish in August of 2022. I'll talk more about hashtags as we kind of go through this content today, um, but for the purposes of your bio, you want to maybe pick one, two, or three that really describe who you are and what genre you write in. So for example here, hashtag am writing romance or hashtag contemporary romance, those are two really like heavy hitting hashtags that you're going to see in the contemporary romance kind of genre on Instagram. So I chose to include them in my bio, and that will give anyone who's kind of looking at my content some understanding of who I am as an author. Obviously, this will be customized to what you write and what genre you're going to be focused in as an author. So think through it, 150 characters, it's not a lot of space, but you want to use it very strategically so anyone can get just a quick snapshot of who you are as you progress in your author journey. The last piece of your bio is just going to be your link here. Instagram was going to give you one web link. Now you can do a couple of different things. You can change this uh, web link here based on the content of your post. Maybe you can just include just your author website. Those are both perfectly fine. For me personally, I feel like I have several different places online that I might want to direct potential readers or other authors to. So I set something up called a link tree. Link tree is free. It's just a really helpful tool that kind of gives you like a landing page of where you can direct other people to. So here's just kind of a, a screenshot of what my link tree looks like. Like I said, it's free. You can set it up just linktree.com. Um, you'll see the same photo that I use on Instagram. So again, just professional branding, consistent branding. Julie Navickis author. And then it tells you exactly who I am, right? And it's consistent with what's appearing in my Instagram bio. But the cool part about this is that you can set up however many links you want. So if anyone's really interested in me and they want to know more about me as an author, they can click on my author profile for Inkspell Publishing. They can go to my Facebook page, my Twitter, my LinkedIn, whatever it looks like. This is just kind of that landing page that will allow you to be um, able to share multiple of your presences online with anyone who's interested. So again, looking back at your bio, you get that one web link here. 
here's my link tree, but you can choose to do whatever you would like to do. Okay, let's keep going and let's talk about content, kind of the most important part of Instagram. So when you think about content, my advice would be think about three niche topics, three things that are really specific to you that you would feel comfortable sharing content about fairly regularly. You want to be consistent and you want to share similar things so that it all kind of has a cohesive branding package when you're done. For me personally, I go mostly with writing tips and advice. So just things that I'm learning along the way, things that I would maybe tell my students in the classroom, um, whatever pieces of advice you want to share, that could be a very large general topic that lends itself well to multiple pieces of content, maybe per week. I also tend to share a lot about my author journey. So where I am in the process, um, what I'm working on, what I'm plotting, what I'm editing, whatever that may look like for me for the week, that's always something that others tend to be interested in. What are you up to? What are you working on? What does your desk look like? Where are you writing today? You know, whatever that might look like for you, the author journey is uh, pretty common, I think that you'll find on Instagram. And then I also tend to focus on book recommendations. I'll tell anyone who's following me what I'm reading, what I just finished reading, what I enjoy. Um, it's also a great way for you to kind of engage with a different audience on Instagram if you're tagging other authors or tagging others who might be interested in those authors. So for me, my three niche topics tend to focus on just writing tips and advice, kind of my story as an author, and then book recommendations or what I'm currently reading. Those are all very interchangeable. So you do what works for you, whatever best fits your, your content area. A bit of advice here, focus on the specific, not the general. And what I mean by that is you wanna make sure that the content you're sharing is specific to you. Um, I see a lot of times on Instagram that individuals will post these beautiful, just motivational quotes. Well, those are great, right? And they're perfectly fine. And I'm not telling you not to post it. But I want you to be aware that you're taking up valuable marketing space by doing something like that. Um, any content that you share should be specific to your experience as an author. So if your quote is about, you know, okay, it's Monday, let's start the week with the positive attitude. Well, that's good, right? But tell us specifically how you're choosing to start the week with your positive attitude. How is it impacting your writing journey? What's that going to do for you as you plan and strategize how you're going to spend your time for the week? So make it specific, talk about your journey, your specific um, approach to whatever that motivational quote might look like. Otherwise, if you're just simply posting a quote, right, nobody's gaining any information from your content. They're not taking anything away that's specific to you and what message it is that you're trying to convey. So keep it specific, shy away from the general. I would also recommend that when you are creating your content, you write in the same voice have the same style, approach it from the same tone. I tend to treat my Instagram content like I would a blog post. Um, much of what I share is related, of course, to these three things, but I write it in the same style each time. So when people will see the content that I share, they get familiar with the voice that I'm contributing. So point being, just keep it consistent. If you're gonna write longer pieces of content that share a story, um, or ask a question or share a piece of your journey, just make sure that it's consistently presented in the same manner. A nice little tip that I've kind of learned along the way, at least from myself personally, is you wanna consider the emotion that you're asking your reader to feel. So based on the content that you're sharing, what do you want your reader to do with that information? What do you want them to feel? Does it tug at their heartstrings? Does it make them want to act on something? Does it make them want to respond to you in some capacity or maybe share your, your post in a story? Think through what you want them to do. What do you want them to feel? And that's going to help you craft your message. One piece of advice that's very logistical for Instagram content creation, you want to make sure that every post has some kind of action item. So when you've given your content, ask a question about it. Take a poll, do some kind of survey, pose some kind of challenge, and ask your readers to report back. That's what's going to earn you and get you the engagement in your content. 
And I'm the first to admit this, this is not my strong suit. Um, I tend to run out of space when I write. Um, I write too much all the time. And so this gets tossed in at the end. But if you're being very strategic and mindful about how you're spending your time on Instagram, this is where your engagement is gonna come in because you're asking your followers to do something. Instagram is only gonna give you 2,200 characters per post and you're only gonna get 30 hashtags per post. So I would definitely say use that space well and be very thoughtful and strategic about what type of content that you're posting and how you're kind of formulating that content as you go through. And more on hashtags in a minute, we'll circle back to that. Okay, consistent branding. This kind of goes hand in hand with content for sure, but consistent branding is something that I want you to think about as a more of a, a holistic strategy for your Instagram author platform. You can see here on your screen, here's a screenshot of what my current Instagram kind of collection looks like. But you can see that I've chosen to keep a very consistent brand throughout. There's a lot of my face, right? Um, but you can see that it's a smart idea to be able to show your readers who you are. Don't hide behind your computer, don't hide behind your book, right? You want to show your readers who you are as a person. At your core, your strategy should be selling yourself, selling yourself as a brand, not selling your book. So think through how you kind of want to make your brand consistent as you move through. I have a pretty set color scheme. I tend to use the same filters on the photos that I take, um, kind of has that more like rustic-y kind of like edge to it. Um, blue is my favorite. I always tend to just go towards blue. Um, so just, you know, think through how you want everything to kind of jive together. Um, Canva is definitely gonna be your new best friend if you're working to actively boost your presence on Instagram. Canva, if you're not familiar with it, is a wonderful design tool that is incredibly user-friendly. I use Canva every single day personal, professional reasons, I'm in there. Um, log way more hours in Canva than I care to admit. If you haven't explored it, you want to. Um, Canva is going to give you some templates that you can pull from and you can use. Um, you can shift out your own pictures, you can change font styles and colors, but it's going to help you conceptualize what that design is going to look like. So check out Canva if you haven't, but it's super helpful when it comes to Instagram. There's actually a whole category of just Instagram posts or Instagram stories that you can pull from, and that will give you the ability to keep that consistent kind of branding strategy. Same colors, high-end photos. Um, you're making sure that everything that you're posting, again, is consistent. Um, like I mentioned early on in the bio portion of this presentation, have kind of that pool of professional photos that you want to consistently share so people get kind of that face with the name recognition. And then just a tip, each post should really complement the last. You're growing in your presence, you're progressing in a journey. So what you posted maybe two or three days ago, you can call back to that post in your current post. That could prompt others to go back and look at your stuff if they find something that's of interest that they want to read more about. It should be building on each other. It's a strategy. So call back to previous posts, make sure everything is consistent and fluid. Okay, your audience. This is a very important piece. Um, your audience is something that you have to consider before you can even start to write content. And from an author's perspective, there's really two key audiences that you're gonna be targeting. Before your book publishes, and is accessible for people to purchase. It's likely that your audience is mostly going to be finding other authors who write in your same genre. You're finding your writing community. You're finding your writing support. Other authors who have a similar interest than you. Once your book is published and it's available for purchase, you might see that your audience on Instagram could flip to focusing on your ideal reader. Two sets of people are present on Instagram, and you have to be very cognizant of what kind of content you're sharing based on the audience you're trying to reach. Are you trying to connect with other authors who have a similar interest than you? Or are you trying to find readers who might want to read your story and need your, read your work? 
So again, the content is going to shift. It's going to change depending on where you're at in your writing journey. So just be mindful that when you're creating content, think about your audience first, what kind of content you want to share with that audience, and then how it's going to relate back to the hashtags that you're going to use. Again, more on hashtags in a second, but those are going to change very, very quickly when it comes to who it is you're trying to target with your content. Okay, engagement, huge, huge thing that you have to be doing on Instagram. Um, it's definitely equally important, if not more important than actually creating your own content. So when it comes to engagement, I would say you're definitely gonna wanna be pushing your own strategic content at least three to five times per week. You wanna make sure that you have a continual presence. Um, you're not bombarding your followers with constant things in your feed but you're still sharing content enough to um, kind of remain relevant in the feed that you're gonna be seeing on Instagram. Um, so three to five times I think is a pretty good sweet spot, maybe every other day if that works for you, but at least three times I think is um, kind of that key point that you wanna hit. Much of what you do though on Instagram is not necessarily engaging with the posts that you're creating, it's engaging with others' posts, so not just your own. I recommend about 15 minutes per day. If you can commit 15 minutes per day, that could be a very valuable use of your time if you're looking to grow your presence on Instagram. So here's kind of a secret. There's a, a strategy for organic growth. Pick out five relevant hashtags. So just as an example, I put on here, hashtag am reading. This particular hashtag is um, pretty hot, I think, when it comes to um, authors on Instagram. And what you do is simply search for that hashtag. Then go through, and I want you to find five to 10 pieces of information that you want to comment on. Be authentic in your comment, right? The goal here is not to promote your work. You just want to be part of the conversation. That's how you're going to find the organic growth that's how you're going to actually connect with other authors or readers on Instagram. Be part of the conversation. Don't force your own work out there, right? That's not the goal. If you're looking to build your presence on Instagram, organic growth will follow with the engagement and the time that you commit to engaging with others on Instagram. Okay, hashtags. Um, pretty important when it comes to Instagram. Like I mentioned before, you only get 30 per post. And I will always tell you, use them all. You're doing a disservice if you're not. The more hashtags that you include, the more likely it is that the content you're sharing is gonna show up in somebody else's feed. Um, be strategic in what types of hashtags you're going to be using. You're not just gonna copy and paste and use the same ones every day. That's not going to work for you. I can tell you from experience that doesn't work. Um, every post should have different hashtags considering the audience it is that you're writing for. So once you know your audience and you craft your content for that audience, then you sit down and you think about how you're going to reach that audience most effectively. And the way to do that on Instagram is to use hashtags. So what I do is I keep a cheat sheet and I break it down depending on which audience it is that I'm trying to reach that day with that content. I just break it down. So I have a whole list of, if I wanna reach romance novelists, I have a category for that. If I'm trying to just reach the general writing community, I have one for that. General readers who might be interested in contemporary romance, I have a list for those. Mm -hmm. And then of course I have some other ones that are a little bit more related to just like general books or book lover or whatever that might look like. So keep your own cheat sheet that is going to be relevant to the content you are going to share and what audiences that you're trying to reach. Um, the best way to find hashtags, I think, is honestly just kind of clicking and exploring. I found some really good ones just by searching other authors who write in a similar genre that I do. So I'm always scanning for that. When I'm looking for others to engage with on my feed, I'm always looking to see what hashtags did they use. They showed up on my feed for a reason, even if I don't necessarily follow them. And so that's a really, really strong way for you to start to see how you can find other authors and other readers on Instagram that you have a connection with. So always take a look at what hashtags are going to be posted there, because that's your opportunity to also reach out to that same audience. 
Another tip, you wanna make sure that you are creating your own hashtags for your book or for your brand. So for example, I will always include if my content focuses on my story, my journey, or what books I'm going to be putting out into the world, I created my own hashtags for it. So hashtag I loved you yesterday. That's my first book that's going to come out here in a little over a year. It's part of a trilogy. So I created my own hashtag for the trilogy. And then I will always hashtag my own name as well. This is just brand recognition. You start it early, and by the time your book is ready to launch, you're going to have a fairly well-established pool that if anyone searched for hashtag Julie Navicus, they're going to find a lot of content <laughs> that's specific to my journey as an author and what book I'm going to be sharing. So again, hashtags, they're very strategic. They're going to change every single time you post content. Do yourself a favor, create a cheat sheet early, depending on which audience it is that you are trying to target on Instagram. Okay, Instagram features. So outside of just the typical, I'm going to create content and share it on your own profile, Instagram offers a lot of features as well that you might wanna spend your time on. Bottom line, if it's a new feature, you wanna try it. Um, you'll absolutely see an increase in engagement, exposure, and growth. Um, if there's a new feature, like, like Instagram came out with Instagram Reels not that long ago, um, anyone who's still using and trying to use Reels as a more active um, method of reaching others on Instagram, you're going to immediately see that there's going to be more engagement on your content, you're going to have more exposure, and your profile is going to grow. So if it's a new feature and you're using it, Instagram is going to prioritize you and give you those things as kind of a, a thank you, right, for testing your new thing. But just kind of a caution, spend your time wisely, look for the quick wins, right? Bottom line, if you're looking to simply connect with others on Instagram, grow your following and grow your platform, maybe you don't want to spend a whole day figuring out how to do Instagram reels, right? Spend your time wisely, look for the quick wins, see how you can use your time most effectively, especially if you're using Instagram with a multitude of other social media platforms think through how to best spend your time for the maximum um, return on your time. Uh, Instagram stories. This is also a really very easy way for you to share content. Um, you don't have to be as strategic about the content that you share in stories. It's going to hang around for 24 hours and then it's going to go away. But it's also a really cool place to interact with followers who are looking at your content. Um, you could use Canva, again, to create Instagram stories if you wanted to, or this is a great way to share others. Um, so if you see content that you like, share it, tag them in it. That's a great way of engagement, and it also shows support for other authors. Instagram TV, this is a really cool tool as well, um, just kind of staying relevant and relatable to YouTube. You can use Instagram TV. There is a 15 minute cap, so you cannot post videos that are beyond 15 minutes. But this could be really cool if you wanted to do maybe like a live reading from a piece of your work, um, keep it under 15 minutes. And this could get some really cool, solid engagement and definitely some exposure if you get the right people who are sharing it in their stories. Reels, I kind of mentioned already, um, instant boost and exposure. So if you have the time to commit, they will help you tremendously but it's a different type of content that you're creating. Um, and it might be a little bit more technology um, time intensive. And then of course, Instagram Live, that's absolutely something I would encourage. Like I said, it's a newer feature. So if you're going to be exploring that feature, Instagram is going to thank you for it and give you more exposure. Okay, I'm gonna wrap it up here with just a little list of tips and advice for using Instagram as an author. Uh, my approach to Instagram has been simply connect, not collect. Um, and I think that's a really valuable bottom line strategy when it comes to growing your platform, not just on Instagram, right, but other platforms as well. I was an avid Instagram user for several years and I got burnt out and I just stopped doing it. I just let it sit out there. My account did nothing for years. And then about in last, I don't know, October or so, when I started really getting into my writing journey, I thought, well, I'm going to need a social media presence if I'm actually going to do this correctly. So I re-energized it, right? I came back to Instagram and thought, all right, I need to be very mindful about the content that I'm sharing. 
And I can tell you with this connect, not collect, I have absolutely doubled the amount of followers that I have, that I started with. And that was just, I don't know, a handful of months ago. Um, it works. It definitely gives you solid connections outside of just simple people who are following your account just to follow it, but they're never going to do anything with the information that you share. So from personal experience, connect, not collect is definitely a very key solid strategy for organic growth and getting your social media presence kind of out there and um, working to gain those appropriate audiences for your material. Overall, it's not really about the numbers. It's about the quality connections. So like I mentioned, organic growth is what you're looking for. A piece of advice, be authentic, be you, right? You're selling yourself as a brand, not necessarily your book, right? You could sell a book based on just its content, right? And that's all fine and well, right? But if you want repeat consumers of your stories and repeat consumers of your words, People are going to buy you as an author. They're not necessarily going to be buying your book. So just be strategic. Be mindful that ultimately you're the one selling yourself. So be authentic. Be you. Be the person you're comfortable being. Uh, tip, you can schedule your posts for Instagram pretty easily. There's a lot of great tools out there. I've used Later and Hootsuite before. Both work perfectly fine. Um, depends on the week for me. You know, I'll schedule things out if I know that I'm going to have a busy week with other things coming up, um, can do it on the weekend and then you're good for the week, whatever works for you. Lots of times we'll just post manually too. So it's up to you, but later in Hootsuite are good places to start. Uh, and this last bit on here, tips and advice. I get asked this question all the time. Um, do you have to have a presence on social media? The answer is yes, you do. If you don't like it, I understand, right? It is a unique world that we live in. And ultimately, if you are going to be successful marketing and selling your own books, you have to have your own social media presence. You just do. Um, Instagram has a huge writing community. And so if you're not quite sure how to, you know, jumpstart your social media presence, I would steer you towards Instagram first. Um, it's just a really good place to connect with other authors and find your ideal readers for the story that you're gonna be publishing in the future. So the answer is yes, you need a social media presence. Okay, uh, that wraps it up for the content that I intended to share uh, live with you, but that didn't get to happen. So if you are listening to this and you have a question that I obviously couldn't answer for you live, please connect with me. Um, you can email me at julie at burningsoulpress.com. I'll respond to you that day. I promise you that. Um, otherwise, you can find me on a handful of different social media platforms. Look for me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and LinkedIn. Um, it's all something that I'm very passionate about. I enjoy the time that I spend on social media. And the more I learn about it, the more confident I feel and how I'm establishing myself as an author. I look forward to hearing from you and I would be more than happy to connect with you and look at your own social media platforms and just give you some advice or tips and tricks for how you can best move forward with establishing your own platform on Instagram. Thanks again, everyone. I'm so sorry again that I wasn't able to do this live, but hopefully this video will still give you the information you were interested in. So thanks so much. I'll see you soon.